How is it going, Bears fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Down Podcast, where we talk everything Bears every day of the week. Today, we are back taking a look at the Bears' Week 3 opponents, the Cleveland Browns, another AFC North opponent for the Bears this week. We're kicking off our Week 3 coverage today. The Browns coming in at 1-1. One and one. There's a lot to look to in this game. I'm going to be breaking down what I think about the Browns' offense, the defense, and what the Bears and rookie Justin Fields have to do if they want to give themselves a chance to advance to 2-1. and one. Before I get into this one, I would like to say you guys have been absolutely crushing it with the support recently. 4.2K subscribers on YouTube. Absolutely wild. Also, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, you guys have definitely been running it up. So thank you guys so much for the support recently. If you haven't already and you're new to the channel, we post the most comprehensive Bears coverage each and every week throughout the regular season. So do us a favor, drop a like, subscribe, comment, follow, whatever you want to do. Uh, keep showing support. We're going to keep bringing you guys the best Bears coverage on the web. Once again, I am on my own today. I am your host, Chris Malpe. Talking about the Cleveland Browns, this is definitely an interesting one. September 26th, the Bears will head to Cleveland to face the Browns at First Energy Stadium, 1 p.m. Eastern time. The Bears are looking to bounce back. Uh, obviously, the big news that won't really be discussed today, but is still important nonetheless is that Andy Dalton has gone down with a bone bruise. Looks like he might miss several weeks, so Justin Fields will have his first start against a Browns defense that is very stout. But before we get into this one, we have a message today from our 2021-2022 season partners and sponsors over at my bookie. so let's get into that. Guys, I would not recommend a service to my listeners that has not been good to me. That's why my bookie is always the right play. You bet, you win, and they pay. MyBookie has live in-game betting on every NFL game. They've got the most rewarding player perks in the business. And for you fantasy guys out there, you can even bet the over-under on how many fantasy points a player will score in each game. You can match your first deposit up to $1,000. That is doubling your first deposit when you use promo code BD to activate the offer. Visit MyBookie online today. That's M-Y-B-O-O-K-I-E. And don't forget to use the promo code BD when creating your account to claim the bonus. You can make some money tonight on Monday Night Football and NFC North Showdown between the Lions and the Packers. Bet, win, and get paid with my bookie. Thanks so much for sponsoring. Now let's get right back into the podcast. All right, fellas, Cleveland Browns, week three. Uh, I was supposed to record with Parth today, but... Uh, there are some big storms out of Indiana. I'm surprised that I have power right now. It's pouring outside uh, and he got his power knocked out, but no worries. We're talking about the Cleveland Browns today. The bears come into this one with a 29.6% chance to win via ESPN's matchup predictor. Cleveland's going to enter this game as the seven and a half point favorites. So let's start on the offensive side of the ball with the Cleveland Browns. They've got a pretty loaded offense, and it all starts up front with Baker Mayfield. He's had a pretty solid season so far, got a little bit injured last week in the 31-21 to win over the Houston Texans, but he leads the way for the Browns. Uh, and he had a pretty solid week last week. He's their franchise quarterback, 19 for 21, 213 passing yards, 10.1 yards per pass for him in week one with a touchdown, as well as an interception. He was sacked two times for a loss of 14 yards, but came out with a solid passer rating of 105. I think the Browns have one of the best, if not the best running back in the league. Nick Chubb is someone who I've loved for a while. And he started off, with a pretty good season, just taking a look at his numbers so far. He's got 26 carries for 178 yards and three touchdowns on the season. It's going to be a tough call for the Bears, but they've done a pretty good job at shutting down the run so far. Now, the wide receiver position is where it gets really interesting for the Browns, and this is going to play a big factor in this Week 3 game. Jarvis Landry is most likely going to miss it. I believe he had a high ankle sprain in Sunday's game against the Texans, so he's probably going to be out against the Bears. And Odell Beckham Jr. hasn't played a snap so far this season. I'm not entirely sure what his injury is, if I'm being completely honest, but he missed the first two weeks. We'll see if he makes his first debut against the Bears, but otherwise, 
It's going to be on guys like Donovan Peoples-Jones and Rashard Higgins to step up and play against the Bears secondary that is already weak and still struggled in week two against the Cincinnati Bengals. So those top two wide receivers for the Browns, possibly both missing this game, is going to be a big one. Austin Hooper, they've got at tight end as well as David Njoku and then Harrison Bryant entering his second year in the league. They've got a pretty good offensive line. Jedrick Wills, Joel Batonio, Wyatt Teller, Jack Conklin, and J.C. Treader. So overall, taking a look at this Browns offense, uh, it's not going to be an easy go for the Bears defense. Uh, Baker Mayfield, is a quarterback who I think is pretty on and off uh, in terms of week to week, but he is the Browns franchise quarterback. Um, and, you know, he's someone who puts up numbers consistently, whether that's interceptions, whether that's touchdowns, he can do a little bit of everything. Um, and it's going to be a little bit of a tougher day for him if he doesn't have his first two wide receivers. But this Browns running game also has been getting off to a really good start just last week uh, against the Texans. They were able to notch. Uh, 156 rushing yards between Nick Chubb and obviously Kareem Hunt as well, who I completely forgot to mention. Uh, Chubb had 8.6 yards per carry, a long run of 26, and a touchdown in that one. So this Browns offense has a lot of firepower. It's going to be interesting to see you know, what they're going to look like, possibly missing both of their wide receivers. Um, I've never been the biggest Baker Mayfield fan. I think he's a little streaky from time to time, but he's still someone that always comes to play and can put up top five quarterback numbers against your defense. The Bears are going to have a tough task. They're going to continue to have to force the pressure against a pretty good Browns offensive line. Uh, they sacked Joe Burrow four times last week, had a ton of quarterback hits. They're going to have to continue to look to build off that uh, in week three against the Browns if they would like to have a chance in this one. But overall, the Browns have a lot of weapons all over the field. It's going to be a tough one. Guys like Hooper and Njoku still have been making plays. And even their wide receivers, as you move down the depth chart, Donovan Peoples-Jones, someone who I wanted the Bears to draft a couple of years ago. And then Rashard Higgins has always been a solid contributor for them. So it's not going to be an easy task for the Bears defense whatsoever in this one. Um, and all the eyes are going to be on Justin Fields. So let's move on to Cleveland's defense. Definitely a stout unit. Um, obviously, Justin Fields looking like the starter in this one and looks like he probably could start two or three of the next couple of games. Um, I know before the season started, we were talking about wanting to start fields in week four after we got past a hump of, of better defenses, but it's going to be fields his first career start, or at least all the signs are pointing towards that. And he's going up against a very tough base four three defense in Cleveland, miles Garrett, Malik Jackson, Jadavion Clowney, Malcolm Smith, Mac Wilson, Denzel Ward, Ronnie Harrison, John Johnson signed from the Los Angeles Rams, and then Greg Newsom, the rookie out of Northwestern. Uh, that's not an easy go. Uh, this defense is really solid. Now, I do believe that, obviously, Fields having his first real week of reps with the ones, he's going to gel a little bit more with our wide receivers, hopefully to find a target he likes. David Montgomery and the run game for Chicago has been pretty good so far. I believe Montgomery has around 170 rushing yards. Uh, I think he's still a top five running back in the league in that category. But this Browns defense is stout. Uh, I'm not sure where they rank overall right now in the league, but they did cause the Houston Texans and also Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs some troubles the last couple of weeks. Tyrod Taylor was having a very good game last week, ended up going down. Davis Mills came in, was 8 for 18, 102 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. And they've been pretty solid at shutting down the run, the Cleveland D, that is. Uh, the Houston Texans were only able to total 82 rushing yards and 2.9 yards per carry with one touchdown on the ground from Tyrod Taylor last week. So, you know, David Montgomery has had a hot hand recently. I still would say that after the Week 2 game, even though he was held to a little bit less than we would hope in terms of rushing. But uh, this Cleveland defense is stout. The pass rush is going to get there. Um, regardless of who the Bears play at offensive line, Jermaine Fetty uh, and Jason Peters had the best combined uh, or the best overall pass blocking grades in the league last week uh, per pro football focus. So they held up pretty well. They only recorded one sack last week on Davis Mills, but uh, this Cleveland defense overall is very stout. I really like what they have in the secondary with Newsom and Johnson. Also Harrison's a solid one as well. And we all know Denzel Ward can play some good football um, alongside guys like Troy Hill, Greedy Williams, Grant Delpit. So they've got some depth there on that defense. It's going to be a really tough one for Justin Fields. Uh, in this one, but you know, we did see the Cle or the Houston Texans have some success throwing the ball. Brandon cooks had nine catches for 78 yards and a touchdown. 
Andre Roberts had a 35 yard catch. Nico Collins had a 32 yard catch. Lindsey, Philip Lindsey, that is, had a 22 yard catch for a score. So hopefully with the with the weapons the Bears have offensively, they'll be able to get going in this one. This is another game where we're going to look for guys like Demir Bird, Marquise Goodwin, Darnell Mooney to have big games because Chicago is going to have to utilize their speed offensively if they want to get going in this one. I'm a little bit worried that this is a game where you know Chicago's offense could become one-dimensional if Cleveland shuts down the run, but I do have trust in David Montgomery. I do have trust in a lot of the speedsters on offense. And Justin Fields, man, we got to see what the 11th overall pick is about. I'm confident in his ability to play. I think he's hopefully in these next couple of weeks going to win uh, and solidify himself as the starting quarterback in Chicago, even though the Bears continue to reiterate that they want to go back to Dalton when he is healthy. But Justin Fields, he's going to have to show up in this one. He's going to be the real big domino in this one in terms of the Bears possibly winning this one or it being a blowout or it being a close game. It's all going to fall on the shoulders of Justin Fields to win the Bears this game and hopefully try and advance them to 2-1. and one. Before I close this one out, let's talk a little bit about what the Bears have to do if they want to win this one. Obviously, you just heard me talk about the offense, but defensively, I think I'm going to reiterate what I said last week. The front seven has to continue doing their thing. We saw a big game out of Roquan Smith last week, a pass defended, an interception, a pick six, as well as eight tackles, a couple of tackles for a loss. He's going to have to continue to shut down guys like the tight ends that the Browns have with Hooper and Njoku. Uh, the front seven is going to have to continue to get there. We saw Robert Quinn play his best game as a bear last week. He recorded two sacks in that one. He's going to have to continue to do that and do his thing because Khalil Mack obviously – uh, deserves so much attention against any opponent. So he's going to draw that attention and Robert Quinn's going to have opportunities. Same with guys like Akeem Hicks. Hopefully the bears can get Eddie Goldman back this week, but they've done a good job at shutting down the run. We've seen Nick Chubb be very successful throughout two weeks. I believe he almost has 90 rushing yards per game. Uh, if that happens against the bears, we're probably going to run into some issues. So it starts up front shutting down the run for the bears is going to be big. And in the secondary man, uh, the bears might have an easier day than some of the future Browns opponents, just because they could possibly be missing both OBJ and Jarvis Landry. But Jalen Johnson, currently the highest graded quarter cornerback in the league per pro football focus. He had four pass is defended in week two. He's going to have to continue to step up and do his thing. We saw a bounce back week from Kendall Vildor last week. Duke Shelley did not look great. He did look better than Marquis Christian. So hopefully someone in that secondary can continue to hold up. And in terms of the Bears safeties, I think they played a really good game in week two. Deshaun Gibson had a fumble recovery. Eddie Jackson with a forced fumble. I believe a couple of them or uh, they had a couple of passes defended collectively. So if that back end of the secondary can hold up, hopefully someone, one of these cornerbacks, can stick up and play a good game here. And then offensively, uh, it, it's going to be tough, but you can't become one-dimensional. You've got to find a way to get the run game going. I don't like how much the Bears have utilized Damian Harris so far. It's nothing against him, but I just think David Montgomery deserves to be the bell, back at, bell cow back in Chicago for the most part. He had 20 carries in week two, uh, which I was happy about. I said he should get 20 plus, but that's still the minimum I think he should get. Uh, you know, we didn't see the Texans put up much uh, in, in terms of the rushing attack against the Browns, but we did see the Chiefs do it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they had a solid day where they had, uh, you know, not that many rushing yards once again, but Clyde Edwards Alaire still was able to average more than three yards a carry. He had 43 rushing yards in that one, and Patrick Mahomes also had a rushing touchdown. So it's going to be important to try and still implement the run game if you are Chicago. Justin Fields, I think that's something great that he brings. Uh, he brings the explosiveness, the dynamic to this Bears offense that Andy Dalton doesn't essentially bring. He's the dual threat quarterback. He's going to draw some attention from the defense just because of his legs and how fast he is. So hopefully that can open up some receivers. The Bears have to get the play action going in this one. And I do believe that they'll be able to find some open receivers from time to time against the stout secondary just because of the attention that Justin Fields brings. And man, he's not scared to throw the ball. Uh, that's one thing we know for sure. So it should be an interesting one in week three against the Browns. A lot of headlines obviously surrounding Justin Fields and all. 
But thank you guys so much for tuning in to our week three installment of Meet the Opponents. If you guys want more comments, if you guys want more content from us, head over to our website. The link is in the top of the description, beardown.com. We're posting columns, articles, and blogs. Recapping week two, already getting you guys ready for week three against the Browns. Should definitely be an interesting matchup with Fields making his first career start. So once again, head to our website for more content. If you'd like to find the podcast on social media, you can enter giveaways that we're having. Justin Fields jersey giveaway coming in October for sure. I said it was coming in September, but it'll definitely come this next month. We want to give back to you guys. So if you want to enter our giveaway, see sneak peeks of guests that we have on the show and also interact with us and let us know what you want to see here on the podcast, do us a favor, follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at Baird Down. And finally, you can find the links to my social media pages down in the description, my Instagram, as well as my Twitter page. Uh, I'm super active on both platforms. It's a great way to interact with me and get to know more about the show. And you can also see my thoughts on all things Bears, the NFL, as well as the entirety of Chicago sports. So, guys, that'll pretty much do it for this one. Feels weird going solo again. We've got a Monday night football game tonight uh, to close out week two, the Packers and the Lions. Um, yeah, I've got Green Bay in that one. I don't know if there's much more to say about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, a lot going on. Justin Fields making his first start. Uh, I'm definitely going to become more and more anxious as this week continues, uh, facing a stout opponent too. So we're really going to see, uh, what number one is all about. If he can be a starting quarter or if he's ready to be a starting quarterback for the bears, uh, and if he can draw us close in this one, uh, there's a lot to look forward to the bears, obviously with the third toughest strength of schedule in the league, not an easy go these next couple of weeks. So it's going to be important for fields to play well, and I'm fully behind him and I fully believe that he can win this team some football games. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Browns bears coverage will continue this week Two uncuts on Tuesday and Thursday, as well as our entire weekly slate of coverage. Make sure if you haven't already drop a like subscribe, follow, we're bringing you guys the most comprehensive bears coverage on the web. I promise we are grinding so hard, working hard to get you guys videos each and every day, but it's been a pleasure to be your host. Once again, my name is Chris Malpe and bears fans as always do us a favor and stay safe and bear down. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.